What's up YouTube, Mr. Lime SC here, and today we're going to be going over one of the guides I think a lot of you guys uh, really have been looking forward to or asking a lot. I get asked this maybe 500,000 times a day in my chat, and this is how do I get to hell and get through hell? Because you know what? Diablo 2 is actually a hard game. This is something a lot of people, I think, sometimes forget, especially if they've played a lot of Diablo 2 or if they just got rushed by their friend and then got given all the good gear or whatever it was. Um, a lot of people kind of forget that the game is actually just really hard. Uh, if you're going to play through, especially things like immunities are really difficult to get past. Uh, and the level up in difficulty from Nightmare to Hell is pretty substantial. Right? Like when you go from normal and you get in Nightmare, it has like a nice gradual curve up. And then you get to hell and it just takes a big old bump. And it becomes very difficult. So we're going to go ahead and talk through some of the things you want to look at for the gear. As well as the mindset of when you're playing through this game right here. So the first thing is... Uh, you, you'll have your character, and overleveling is never a bad idea, especially if you have a character that relies on an actual hit with attack rating, right? If you need to hit something with attack rating, there is a formula where it takes your attack rating, the monster's defense, but then that's only half the formula. The other half is your level and the monster's level. So even if you have decent attack rating, if you're 20 levels below the monster's level, it's going to be a lot more difficult to hit that monster, right? So the more that you can kind of over-level as you progress through, the easier it is going to be to hit, and that'll be very helpful. Um, additionally, things like ignore target defense on weapons can be super, super solid, as that will take away that first half completely of the uh, formula, so you only have to deal with your level versus their level, and it's much easier to hit them. That's for things that require attack rating. What sorts of skills do? It would be stuff like multi-shot requires hit. Guided arrow requires a hit, right? Strafe, these things require hits. Those physical hits generally are the ones. Things that do not, charge strike. Charge strike, literally, if I put it on, um, and I guess I have to get a javelin of some sort. Let's see if charcy has got something for us. Probably not here. Yeah. Regardless, uh, the attack rating will just go away because there is no attack rating for charge strike. Same with lightning fury. It just hits. When you stab them, when you throw it, whatever it is, it just hits. This is also true for all of your spells. So bone spear, hammers from the hammered in, frozen ore, blizzard, meteor, fireball, right? Any of the spells, they are always hitting. And so you don't have to worry at all about having to deal with attack rating and all of that. So that's kind of the first thing to talk about right there is you want to make sure you can hit. Now, an important thing and a big thing that we're going to note, the first thing I really want to go, go to here is I want to talk about um, the end of Nightmare. So leveling up in Nightmare, there's really a couple of ways to do it. Number one, you can go level in the... Uh, doing just like Eldritch runs if your character is a little bit weaker. So you just come up here, you come up here and you kill these guys, you kill Eldritch and his minions and you're good to go. Of course, the more popular one and what you can do with players is you can do uh, World Stone Keep and do bail runs. And so a lot of people will go 50, 60, 70 and they'll kind of stop around like 70, 72, 3, 4, whatever and then move on to hell. Um, I think you can definitely move on a little earlier, but if you're moving into hell and you're like level 55, 60, you're probably going to be a bit under level and it's probably going to be a little difficult. I would say you at least want to be in your mid 60s generally, especially if you're newer to the game. Um, I'll go to hell in, at like 49 as like, I, I guess I've gone at like 44, 45 before when I'm speed running and that's like the lowest that I'll ever go and... It's very difficult. <laughs> Would never recommend it. That is for speedrun purposes pretty much only. Definitely take your time in Nightmare and make sure that you're leveling up. Um, now, 
In terms of things that you want to be looking for and gear, the best places to really be gearing are going to be uh, Nightmare Mephisto, I would say, Nightmare Cows, Nightmare Chaos Runs, and Nightmare Dariel also has some decent drops. So a lot of these sorts of things, Rock Stopper, Water Walks, Blood Fist, Jalal's Mane, Mage Fist, um, Trang's Gloves, the runes for spirit, right? Nightmare Countess too. Runes for spirit, uh, sword, um, telling of beads, angelics, mahim oak, right? All of these sorts of things are going to come from those places. Nightmare Mephisto is one of the best places to farm. Highly recommended. If you need a guide on how to farm Mephisto, I've got a guide down below. Um, but you know, you can just get so many of these items, and we'll talk a little bit about why these items are important. Uh, for going into hell, but that's the main thing is you really need to get some gear and get some levels because like I said Hell is another step up and so it's not just having the mindset. It's also having the right gear um, When you're going into it. So both of those are going to be very important. So That being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the gear, right? The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure your resistances are going to be strong in hell the biggest reason for this is because you have a minus 100 resistance penalty in hell. You have zero penalty in normal, minus 30 in nightmare, and minus 100 in hell. So this means if I take all my gear off and just have nothing with resist whatsoever, you're going to just see massive drops in resist. And this is perfect. This is Nightmare, and I have minus 20. And this is because, uh, oh, the difficulty penalty is minus 40. But because of Anya, it's minus 30. That's right. So I now have two Anya quests done, so that's what it is. Excuse me, minus 40. Um, but whenever you save Anya, you get 10 all resist. So that's definitely expected. So I've saved them in normal and now in nightmare as well. So this character, you can see difficulty penalty minus 40. Um, but I have bonus plus 20% from my quest. But in hell, if I do that, I will be at minus 80 all res. And we can even see right now, I think I was at like 47 and all that stuff on this character. Right now, if I go over here. I'm still in the negatives on three of my resistances, and this is having, like, all these things and whatever, right? So, like, take out the Annie and Torch, and it's just awful. And this is a character that has, you know, some gear on and some things. Obviously, she's missing a couple pieces, whatever, but, like, it's very easy to not have resistances in Nightmare and Hell, okay? That's the important thing to say, and especially in Hell. So you really want to focus on this. The second thing you want to focus on is you really want to focus on vitality and life. If you can boost those up, that's going to be super, super valuable to you. And the last thing you really want to focus on is faster cast rate, faster hit recovery, faster run walk, all of those kind of fasters. Um, you want to either hit your breakpoints or have enough like run walk, whatever, to make it so that your character can move and get away from things and you can see I've got some FRW on from uh, probably here yeah there's some right there and then some fast run walk small charms so you can see this character can run at a normal speed but if I drop all of these and I go down to zero faster run walk perfect you can see I'm a lot slower and if I'm trying to like get away from monsters it's just going to be difficult. It's just going to be a lot harder to get away from the monsters and space myself out in an appropriate manner than if I have a little bit more run walk and I can, you know, navigate around and, and get away just a little bit faster. It's really amazing how much that does. Additionally, like I said, your attack speed and your cast rate is very important because there is the idea of he who puts the other in hit recovery first wins is a little bit how it goes. So if I'm next to 20 mobs and I go right in the middle of all of them and they start to swing to hit me, if I hit all of them first, like with a Nova or whatever it is, all of them will go into hit recovery and not hit me. If they all hit me first, I'll go into hit recovery and not hit them. 
So the faster that you can get your spells off or your attacks off, the better you're going to be because now you're going to be able to hit them first rather than them hit you first. And that is a very big deal in Diablo 2. Now, stacking some of these things that we had just kind of talked about. What are good places and whatever to look for? Well, like I said, getting it from your gear is going to be important and charms as well. So something like a rock stopper is fantastic. You can see this has vitality, hit recovery, resistance, and damage reduce. That's super great. Something like Blood Fist. This is little IES, good hit recovery, plus to life. Something like this. Some faster run walk, big dexterity, massive life, 65 to life right there. That's super solid, right? Big resistances on Akira's Guardian and cannot be frozen. Mage Fist gets you the faster cast rate on gloves. Goblin Toes gives crushing blow, which can be nice for you're like a melee character. Tranks gives faster cast rate and cold resist. And of course, something like Spirit gives faster cast rate, vitality, mana, and of course, plus to skills, which is another beneficial thing because once again, the more damage that you can do, the faster you can kill monsters and the less that you have to worry a lot of times, right? So if you can stack up your damage on like spell casters and that stuff, having plus skills can be very useful. Maybe you luck into something like a Shaco. Maybe you do get yourself, I mean, a nice Raven Frost can be really good for that can't be frozen. Maybe you get a T-God. Strength, vitality, some lightning absorb, which helps out. Lifesteal, damage reduction. Even just regular belts, though, like this. Plus 49 to life, 28 light res. This would be a fine belt to take you in, into hell. So once again, I'm looking for skills. If I'm a caster and, and you know, using plus skills really helps my damage. Um, life, resistances, damage reduction, and then the faster cast rate, run walk, hit recovery, all that stuff, right? I'm really just looking to get those things so that I can just power through and be a, a mobile damaging character that has some tankiness. Additionally, like we said, charms are great. Getting a little fast run walk, resistance, life charms, these are great, little 18, 20 lifers. Any of these things that you can pick up can all just be so nice and so useful. Just resistances, hit recovery. This is it, right? This is what I'm just looking for on these kinds of charms. Obviously, like, skillers are great and things, but don't worry about needing all of these um, if you can't get them. Even this charm. I found this charm, 13 all red, 7 fast run walk. I was like, that's fantastic. That's a great grand charm. So... Let's go ahead and continue a little further right here. Um, and let me put on just a little bit of gear so I can, what do I need? I'm five dexterity short. Uh, give me water walks. How much strength short am I? 20. 20 on T gods. Oh, but then I lose the dexterity. How am I still short there? All right, well, we don't need a shield. That's fine. We'll play without a shield. Um, so, oh, that was Blade Buckle, I think. Yeah, wrong one. Okay, so that still breaks us. All right, whatever. This is all fine. Uh, we have an amulet available. Mahimok. Halfway there. Perfect. So, now we've gotten ourselves into hell. And the thing that, I, like I said, I really wanted to show about this is the, is the idea of this right here. Let me change my controls. The idea of how you have to navigate when you're actually in hell. So the first thing is there are a lot more unique monsters and bosses in hell which means you have to be a lot more careful about how you engage stuff. If I'm in normal, I can just run up and these are just regular dudes. Now it's a champion pack. So they're gonna do a little bit more damage to me, right? Yeah, you'll run into some, but it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna run into more of the boss groups as you go through. Additionally, boss groups are going to be harder. So you have to note that in normal, they only get one affix, in nightmare, they get two affix, and in hell, they get three affixes. So this means you could have a normal boss that's cold enchanted, but you could have a hell boss that is cold enchanted, cursed, and extra fast, right? 
or they could be extra strong, lightning enchanted, and and cold enchanted. I mean, literally all of these can stack, and so now their damage is just getting absolutely insane as you're getting more bosses with more Avixes doing even more damage, right? So this guy is extra strong, extra fast, and he has Conviction Aura, which is gonna drop our resistances down a ton. So that's pretty deadly. But additionally, when there's multiple packs, now you're gonna have these packs stacking up next to each other. So you're gonna have, why is my mercenary? Okay, he's still, he's, he's good. Um, you're gonna have, you know, this pack with the Conviction Aura standing next to this pack with Lightning Cold Enchant Mana Burn. And then another pack shooting you with arrows or something. And you can very quickly run into death, right? You can very quickly run into very scary situations. That is the stuff. And so when you're fighting a lot of these these mobs and, and stuff like that, you can't just run in like normal and be like, I'm just going to go right here and attack all this stuff and attack everything while I get hit from all sides. That's not how you fight here. When you get to hell or if you're having difficulty in Nightmare, the way you fight is a lot of kiting fight. First, I want to get out of the range of ranged monsters, and then I can fight and I can kill like a monster here, right? I'm taking these monsters on one mob at a time or in, in a line, whatever it is, so that I'm not having to deal with so much stuff all at once because you just can't always deal with so much stuff all at once. And that's really a, an important piece uh, that I want to get across to everybody. Let me go like Lost City. And this character kind of can because she's, you know, stacked up and has some good stuff. But if I'm fighting all here, once again, I can't be standing in the middle of this stuff trying to fight it because that's just going to kill me, right? Instead, I need to be backing up, throwing that, stabbing over here, dealing with this like this, right? Like, you need to be playing a lot safer in how you engage. And I think a lot of people don't understand that because they come from a lot of current ARPGs that exist where I feel like you don't have to do that as much. Your positioning doesn't matter as much. And so, yeah, Diablo 2, you'll if you watch me play a lot, you'll notice how much I do like kiting and moving and dodging projectiles and making sure I'm only fighting one, two monsters at a time. And this is melee as well. Once again, for melee as well, I'm doing the same thing. It applies to both melee. With range, you're doing a lot of drop a blizzard, run away. Drop a blizzard, run away, and kind of have them walk through it. But for melee, it's even more important because I really need to make sure that I can not get surrounded. Otherwise, I'm always going to be in hit recovery, right? So you just, you know, like all of this, I'm never charging into all of this to fight. I'm backing up like this and throwing. And throwing from afar, stabbing the one who comes at me. Stabbing the one who comes at me, right? Like, keeping the distance and kiting like this is going to be so much more helpful for a lot of you guys as you're playing through the game and just fighting a few or one or two mobs at a time rather than all of those mobs at a time. Because otherwise, like I say, you're just going to die. It's just going to happen where you just die over and over. Now, let's go to something that is also difficult for a lot of people right here and something that would be good to talk about. Let me grab this real fast. And do that. Um, dealing with immunities. So, for instance, let's go to the flare jungle out here and run around a little bit. So, one thing that you'll see is light immunes, right? These winged nightmares are immune to lightning. Well, crap. I do lightning damage. Obviously, I have Eth Titan, so I do some physical damage as well, but you won't be able to. So it's like, Mr. Llama, what do I do with all these light immunes? I I'm trying to kill them. I'm trying to stab them. They keep killing me. What do I do? You need to just go past them, right? Fight the mobs that you can, and the ones that you can't, avoid them. This is literally lightning immunes here, and... I just can't kill them. I mean, I can, like I say, because I have, you know, a little physical damage, but I really can't. So I can do that, or I can pick up a lower resist wand, and it won't even break these guys, so it doesn't even matter on them. Let me see if it breaks them. It does. So I can't even break these guys. So I'm not going to engage with them, 
And this is going to be the biggest thing and why I say getting faster run walk and tankiness and all this stuff is important because you want to be able to run away from them. And notice how I run to avoid dealing with them. And okay, I ran into a dead end there. Okay. Notice how I gather them and lead them to a certain side so I can go around them the other way, right? This is going to be an important thing that you need to learn and a very important skill in Diablo 2 because if you try to kill every single thing, and you can, you can get a mercenary and bug them using the merce bug that I've talked about in the mercenary video and that stuff. I can link that down below. Um, that can be helpful. But this is how I'm really getting through a lot of these areas. I'm just avoiding the, the monsters I don't want to have to fight. Plain and simple. And it's a, little, it's a little scary. I mean, obviously, I don't have a shield and stuff either. But it works. And a lot of it is how do you guide the monsters once again, lead them to a side so you can go around them on the other side, right? This is going to be the best thing. And this is the one of the hardest areas for the, the Amazon right here, which is why I went out here. Because this is one of those areas that just murders a lot of people um, when they try and run through it. Now, like I had said, let's say that these guys were light immune and I could break them. I can use a lower resist one, put lower resistances on them, and then kill them with that. Right? So you can lower the res using a lower res wand. Then those guys are now killable. And that's so much better. And you can shop this. This is shoppable uh, from Act 2. I mean, Act... Yeah, Act 1 Nightmare, really, and up. You want to be level 31 and higher. You can shop this from one of those vendors, and you're totally fine. Um, this can be helpful in some of these cases. But overall, when I'm fighting Lightning Immunes, I'm not fighting them. I'm avoiding them. And then, let's say I have a character, and I'm going to, you know, now I want to magic find a little bit. I'm not gonna magic find in areas that have a lot of lightning immunes. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to be focusing in areas that are best for the character. So for instance, the Javazon I love to do in normal cows because there's like almost no light immunes. The king is, but other than that, there's like maybe one other boss or something. So I can run around, kill everything, and it's just gonna be super, super nice uh, for me to just be able to farm in those areas. And also, none of the act bosses have immunities, so you can go to Andaril, you can go to Mephisto, but once again, let's say I'm trying to run to Mephisto, I'm not stopping and fighting every mob, especially if it's a lightning immune. I'm moving past it. People say, oh, there's these maulers, what do I do? Just don't engage the maulers, right? If you want to kill these guys, you can throw some stuff at that. But a majority of the monsters aren't going to be instant deadliness. And as long as you're just not getting hit by them all the time, then you're good. You're good to go. You just keep running past them. You go for the boss. You get to Mephisto. You kill Mephisto. You rinse and repeat. And it's just going to be great. Right? Here we go. Perfect. How easy is that? It's like when, uh, yeah, when somebody in Twitch chat is acting up. Do you feed them? No, you don't feed the trolls. And then I just kill Mephisto. And he drops his stuff. And I get whatever I want. And then I leave. And I'm... I'm good. I'm a lightning Amazon who avoided the lightning immunes. And I farm Mephisto. And I can rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Be in a great spot. And once again, get the gear that I need for this character. Like those blood fists. That raven frost. You know, Razor Tail, Water Walks, Mahim Oak, Trax, maybe a Shaco if I'm doing like Hell and Dario, Hell Mephisto, you know, but Tarnhelm, Kira's, Mage Fist, right? All of these things, all of these items, and I have um, in every one of my guides that are up on Icy Veins or on my YouTube, there's a whole playlist of every build guide I've created. Uh, I have a list of budget gear specific for that character as well. So I have like ideal gear that you want to aim for, but also all of the budget gear or a lot of good ideas for budget gear and ideas for the stats that you want to get while you're playing through the game. 
and these sorts of things that you want to stack so that when you get to hell, you have resistances that aren't in the negatives. That's going to be a big thing, right? Getting there and you put this on and, oh, wow, look at this. My resistances are, are really positive or they're 30%, 40%, something like that. You're going to be great. If there's zero, five, negative 20, you're going to have a terrible time in hell because you're going to get murdered by so many of the elemental damage uh, monsters in hell. They're just very stacked. There's a lot of damage in hell. So remember, get your good stats, get your good levels, make sure you're engaging the right monsters properly and not just diving in and expecting to kill everything because you can do that more in Nightmare but less in hell. And then remember um, to just, uh, what, was the last, what was the last thing? Remember to farm and not engage monsters that you cannot fight, right? Those are really going to be like my four main tips right there. I know this video is a little bit long, um, but it's kind of a lot to talk through because there's a whole piece of going from nightmare through hell. And it's not just an easy like, oh, you just do this and you're done. It has just a lot of uh, difficulty to it. I mean, it's still a hard game. It's, it's just very tough. And if you don't engage the right way, you're just going to be in trouble. So anyways, with that being said, I hope that's helpful. I definitely recommend my guides for learning some more of the budget stuff and how to get the character, you know, each unique character kind of through the game, little tidbits about them, because that might help specifically. But uh, yeah, I hope that this was helpful in some way. Good luck out there. Peace, YouTube.